English is a dictionary for LGBTQIA plus lingo and colloquial expressions. Having these personal one-on-one -on -one conversations or group discussions about queer and gay lingo. There's just some major people that I just wanted to connect with. Cinda, you are one of those amazing people. <laughs> so um, today we're going to talk about terms. Uh, we're going to talk about you. Whatever you want to talk about, All right. you know. So let's dive in this bag. Let's dive in. <laughs> I was born in Brighton, okay. Massachusetts. Okay. It's, it's a city in Boston. Okay. I was born to two deaf parents. How do you identify? I'll be honest with you, Chloe. Mm -hmm. this, this is... Um, this is all new, like the okay. terms and all that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm newly exposed to it. I just learned recently by going to a sexuality workshop that you can use the pronouns she, they. I just use she, her because I was just going through a journey of figuring out who I am. Mm -hmm. And in fact, actually, when I was younger, um, I was always athletic. I've always wanted to do wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, one time in middle school, there was a wrestling team. Uh, for the first time, actually, and they were going to do co-ed. Mm -hmm. And I wanted so bad to join that team. Mm -hmm. And um, I asked my mother mm -hmm. if she can sign the permission slip. And, you know, she, I'll never forget, she told me no. Mm. Um, because she's like, that, you know, this is for girls. Mm -hmm. I mean, for, for boys. Mm -hmm. like, You're a girl. Mm -hmm. It doesn't match, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, okay, fine. And back then, you know, I was a I was a goody good, so I didn't think about forging my my parents' signature <laughs> and going in there. I um, would have. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there was that, and then there was another opportunity where football. I wanted to go join the football team, mm -hmm. and again, I was denied because of me being a girl. And mm -hmm. from that point, I was like, I like all these things that aren't girly, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so I started questioning my. Um, my gender mm -hmm. it, was I was I meant to be a man then mm -hmm. um, until recently where I'm like no oh, this power in being a woman and wow all this I mean femininity femininity and what you hear about it I mean there's so much power in being a woman and I yeah. feel like hey women really do want run the world and yeah. I started accepting that mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um, you talked about just identity which is just this big massive thing that people want to complicate and it's not complicated it's just complex mm -hmm. and and we are complex because we're humans Definitely. right if you had layers i like to identify them as layers like what would they be for 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 instance me um a layer is that i'm a woman um and i identify as femme mm -hmm. um and that i am black and that um i am bisexual. I start off with being like, curious at, at times or that I also am demisexual, which is, you know, something that I have to have a real type of connection with someone like mentally, mm. uh, emotionally to be physically involved with someone. Right. So there's so many different layers and these are all words that I've learned through discussion. Um, through research and it helps me like figure out my layers you mm -hmm. know identity is ever evolving and you you start one way right but you can end somewhere else mm -hmm. another beautiful quality is that you are part of the ASL community yes yeah yeah <laughs> can you teach us something so actually there are some terms in the ASL community are like politically correct terms. So okay. unless you're a part of that group, mm -hmm. you you can't use that sign. So okay. for example, okay. the word um, gay, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, anyone that's outside of that group has mm -hmm. to fingerspell the word gay. Okay. However, if you're in the group, there's you know there's a sign, this sign, there's a letter G. Okay. And you put it to your chin like this. Mm -hmm. um, for lesbian, mm -hmm. you know this is a sign, it's a letter L, mm -hmm. and you put your finger to your chin and mm -hmm. tap it. Now, uh, I'll be honest, like, I don't mm -hmm. know the terms for, like, intersex, but, you know, transgender mm -hmm. um, is this sign. Okay. Now, they're talking about changing it because they don't like how it's 
starting out as open and then it's closed in. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's language, right? It's right. ever changing as well. And that's the beauty of language. It's always evolving. Yeah. Um, and it should because it should satisfy, you know, the evolution of humankind, right? Mm -hmm. What I can say in doing the research just for the Queen's English is that the gay and queer and black community, they have um, contributed a vast amount of language mm -hmm. um, to the overall uh, LGBTQI plus community. I mean, a vast amount of language because of like the ballroom scene, um, because of like the black gay male scene, mm -hmm. even the black gay, um, black lesbian community as well, creating words um, like stud, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, ag. You know, they're, they're, and I, that's what I love is because language has its groupings. You know, because it everyone has their own particular experience and lifestyle, and um, and some language also came just because of mar marginalization. Mm. So because of this experience, then it prompted me to, you know, create language that basically that's what the community did. Even, you know, even um, in communities like the leather community or the BDSM community, mm -hmm. language is created mm -hmm. because of a lifestyle, because of a need to articulate a certain thing. And so language is created. The cool thing about, um, you know, queer language is that it's so good like it just becomes expansive mm -hmm. and it like filters into mainstream. Mm. Um, but what's problematic is that um, appropriate documentation and uh, credit hasn't been given. So that's why the Queen's English was created. AFAB, and what that means is assigned female at birth. Yes. And that means it's an acronym for assigned female at birth. This term is used by a range of people, including transgender, non-binary, gender non-conforming, and or intersex individuals, as a way to communicate to others the gender assigned to them at birth, and it's based solely on their sexual anatomy. Androgyny, a display of both masculine and female, uh, feminine qualities, the state of being androgynous. It can be abbreviated, abbreviated as androge or andro, mm -hmm. a label used to define an androgynous gender identity. Mm -hmm. wow, How do you feel about that? that? Ooh, someone's growling. You hungry? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about that one? Um, I, feel, I feel like I can relate to that one. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm growing a little something here, mm -hmm. and it's all natural, baby, I promise. <laughs> It's, <laughs> but um, people ask me, are you, are you transitioning? I'm like, no, you mm -hmm. know, I don't um, have plans on transitioning. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I'm comfortable with mm -hmm. how I look, even mm -hmm. with the facial hair growing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is what it is. So. Yeah. Gender nonconforming. It is used as an adjective. Expressing one's gender in a way that does not fit neatly into the gender binary, often abbreviated as G and C. Mm when it doesn't fit in the binary of female male then it is considered gender non-conforming that is yeah so that's me if you, yeah if you don't <laughs> well there that's, we go yeah i you mean feel like totally i mean i don't even i feel like society's <laughs> idea yeah. of female I, mm -hmm. um, a lot of it i don't yeah. physically anyway I, right I, when you first see me i don't yeah. fit into that you have your um your gender identity mm -hmm. right you have your gender expression. Identity, I can say I um, identify as female. Expression, femme, yes, but there's some times where I, I can be more of like, like a little soft butch, you know what I mean? <laughs> like real, real soft, but you know what I mean? So my expression is vast, and I think that's what you're talking about mm. because I don't have to have this ideal um, look of, femininity there should not be an ideal look of femininity right? It, right it just should be there's power in the you know complexity you know mm -hmm. i like to say that it's not complicated it's complex and like gender nonconformity is like androgyny is in that umbrella right okay. because it's not those those binaries again of male female i thought that the term fluid okay that's also um i i felt you know when i encountered that word i felt like that was mm -hmm. 
a good match for me because yeah. I felt like it was just that's right a little bit doesn't fit me into one box that's right, right. that's right and so um, I feel like that's a big umbrella that kind so of I, I do feel like you know, you know gender non-conforming fluid um, those are um, non-binary these are wonderful terms to show the uh, spectrum and the wave of mm -hmm. everything that is encompassing or you know that is not on one end or the other mm -hmm. They could be interchangeable, but they still have it. They still have their own weight, mm -hmm. you know, because someone really can just say, "No, I'm fluid," and this is, you know, my definition of being fluid. You know, because mm -hmm. fluid can can be with expression, fluid can be with um, gender identity, and fluid can also be with um, sexual orientation, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. it's just a beautiful word to show the complexity. Yes. <laughs> so here's a great one. I like that. Um, pronoun. Pronoun. Yeah, it's, it's a this? word that we're seeing, you know, mm -hmm. it's becoming more popular mm -hmm. and right mainstream. So let's talk about pronouns. So pronoun, we'd spell it out, mm -hmm. right? Because actually in ASL, there are no pronouns. Mm -hmm. um, we just point. Okay. It's just we point mm -hmm. who we're talking about, mm -hmm. right? And then, or we, if we're talking about me or us or, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that the pronouns is definitely a, a hearing thing in my experience. Ah, okay. Um, a grammatical way to refer to someone without naming them according to gender identity. As our cultural understanding of gender has expanded, pronouns too have expanded from the traditional use of she, her, hers, and he, him, and his to include non-binary and gender non-conforming identities such as they, them, and theirs. Mm -hmm. Or she, they. Or she, they. Yeah. Or Did she, you know they. that you can do that? Absolutely. I you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. Because it's you. And the whole thing about it is just have to have that agency, but also to provide um, more understanding for self, mm. to be able to articulate and stand firm in who you are, mm -hmm. and then also to provide um, a community and conversations so people can expand their minds to understand that there is more. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love words, right? Because I'm just like, hmm. Because it, it, the reason why is because it's my own personal journey. Like, I remember when I first learned demisexual, I was like, wow, that's me. You know, that's me. Like, I, you know, I, I feel understood. I'm mm -hmm. like, I feel that way. Wow, yes, you know. Words don't confine you and they don't have to be you. But it's just something to assist yourself as well as the larger community, you know, on who you are, you mm -hmm. know, and how you want to be understood. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's new yeah. to me. I didn't, I didn't think of words as being fluid. Okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. Being malleable and, and using it how you want it mm -hmm. to, to use them. Yeah. You know? And did you know that International Pronoun Day was first celebrated October 17th, 2018? What? And 25 countries to acknowledge the many ways gender expression is representing, represented in our queer community. And it's annually observed on the third Wednesday of October. And the hashtag is hashtag International Pronouns Day or hashtag Pronouns Day. That's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> That's cool, right? So this year we're definitely celebrating that. Turn up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, thank you thank for you. You know, getting me push started ah, and jump started. I love it. Thank you so much. Hugs, hugs. <laughs> Happy you. birthday thank again. You, thank you, thank you. For sure. So we're signing out. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned. Um, I, I did. Sure did. Yes. So mm -hmm. we'll have more to come. All right. Are we going to beatbox out? Oh. <laughs> okay. Hey, Queen's English, we out. Hey. <laughs>